Now we'll discuss quadratic inequality. Make sure that you understand this because this question came out every year in the past year SPM. Find the range of x which satisfy this inequality. The first one we have nearly x squared plus 5x plus 7 more than 1. This is obviously a quadratic inequality because the highest power for x here is 2. For b, we have 2x squared minus x minus 3 more than 0. Again, this is a quadratic inequality. So I'm going to solve the quadratic inequality using a simple three-step process. The first step here, you have to rewrite the inequality with 0 on one side and a more than 0. I'm going to standardize this with a more than 0. For part a here, I have negative x squared plus 5x plus 7 more than 1. So I have to rewrite the inequality with 0 on one side which I need to bring over my 1 to the left-hand side. I have nearly x squared plus 5x plus 7 minus 1 more than 0. So I have nearly x squared plus 5x plus 6 more than 0. So I already have an inequality with 0 on one side here. That is 0 on my right-hand side. I have to make sure that the coefficient of x squared a is positive. Now my coefficient of x squared here is negative 1. What I'm going to do now is to multiply both sides with negative 1. So negative x squared, I have positive x squared minus 5x minus 6. So now very important here, if you multiply with any number, you have to change your inequality sign. That is, for more than, you need to change to less than 0. So you completed your first step, that is, you have 0 on one side, and your a that is coefficient x squared now is 1, which is a positive number. So steps 2 now, you have to find where it crosses the axis. What you do here is, x squared minus 5x minus 6, you put this equal to 0. So factorize it. In the past year, definitely you can factorize it. You have x times x. I have a 6 here, 1 here, nearly 6x plus 5x, I have nearly 5x. So I have x plus 1 equal 0, x equal nearly 1, or x minus 6 equals 0, x equal to positive 6. Now I completed my second step to get the point where it crosses the x-axis. The step 3 now, I need to sketch the graph to get my answer. Remember for quadratic graph, where your coefficient is positive, you have a graph with a U-shape. So my graph will be something like that. It's a U-shape. And from steps 2, we know that it crosses the axis at 91 and 6. So this is my x-axis. Always put the smaller number at the left-hand side followed by the bigger number. So the last step here is the most important step. That is to determine your answer. So you look back to your inequality sign, you are looking at less than zero. If you are looking at less than zero, so you have to shape the lower part of the x-axis. The final answer should be x is between negative 1 and 6. So now for b, you have 2x squared minus x minus 3 more than zero. So now we're going to check whether there is 0 on one side. Yes, we have 0 on one side. And the coefficient a in this case is positive 2, which is already more than 0. So we completed the first step. The second step now, you have to put 2x squared minus x minus 3 equal to 0. Factorize. You have 2x multiplied with x, that is 2x squared. 3 multiplied with 1, you have 3. Nearly 3x plus 2x, you have nearly x. To solve this, 2x minus 3 equal to 0. x is 3 over 2. And x plus 1 equal to 0. x equal to minus 1. So now you can sketch your graph. You have an x-axis here. The graph is a U-shape. Now your smallest value here is nearly 1. Your bigger value is 3 over 2. Now you're looking back to your inequality, you're looking at more than zero. So if I look at more than zero, you have to shape the upper part of the x-axis. 
Your answer should be x less than negative one or x more than three over two. So as I told you before, quadratic inequality come up every year in the past year. So it's very important that you understand it. Before you sketch the curve, you have to make sure that your coefficient x square more than zero, so that the whatever curve you draw is actually a U shape. I find that a lot of students make mistake at the final part here when they need to get the answer for the range. So look at these two example here. The first graph here, we are going to cross axes as ninety seven and five. And if you have an inequality that is less or equal to zero, you need to shade the lower part of the x-axis, and your final answer should be x more or equal to negative seven and less or equal to five. For the second one, you are going to cross the axis at negative two and one, and the inequality sign here is more than zero, so you need to shade the upper part of your X axis, and your final answer should be x less than negative two or x more than one. Make sure you understand these two picture because your final answer in the exam either will be the first one or the second one. There's only two possibility.